Welcome to Brazing 101 at the St. Louis Art Museum with mount maker Tim Scornia. So we don't have a whole lot of time, just about 30 minutes to kind of give you a brief rundown. So here we have our pickle pot that we're gonna use, our little pickle tongs. So I made a little pickle man so I know exactly where they are. This is the type of pickle I use. My little wash bucket beneath. Here's my soldering bench. So your fire brick. We have our handy flux, which I most commonly use with silver solder. This is what I make most of my mounts with. Every now and again, I'll use this type of filler metal in flux, so that's stay bright. And then I use this soldering paste. So the solder is built in to the flux and it comes out like a squeeze tube. So this is for really low melting stuff. This is 450, this is what that melts at. And then we have some heat shield up on the table. Uh, we're going to talk about this cool gel, how to use that when working with mounts. Here is some yellow ochre. I'm going to do a little quick demo on how you use that when making mounts. And then mostly we're going to be using this torch here, this little smith. And that's hooked up with a yellow map and some, oxy and some oxygen. And then down here we have an acetylene setup. And that's this torch here. It's a little bit less heat and then a little bit less heat it's hooked up just to propane right there and that's also blue propane hooked up to that torch so a couple variety of torches over here and then on this side we've got our oxyacetylene set up so this is our big kid torch so it's set up with a number two so we'll use that for a little demo as well on some yellow brass joining of thicker metal thicker metals so this is yellow brass that's one type I'm going to use today. So this is plate brass, and then this is 360 brass. You can tell this is what they call machining brass. You can tell the difference because of the grain. When you get this, it's a little duller color, and it has more lead and zinc content in it. And then this is 260, so it's a little brighter, and it has more copper, and you can cold form this material. So that's most commonly used. Those are the brasses that are most commonly used. So the 260, you can cold form. The 360, you have to anneal before you want to start shaping it around an object. You can cold form it slightly, but it will crack over time. And then this is 302 stainless, we'll use that. So I use that, I also use 316 stainless, but most of the time I TIG, TIG weld that material. Um, this is mild steel, so this is cold roll steel, what's called cold roll. So I, I use this when I braise and solder, and I use cold roll stock. So they call this strap material. So hot roll steel is also used in mount making, but that's more for welding. Uh, that has a lot more, that has mill scale on the top of it, so it's just more to remove. But here's our TIG. We're gonna look at this a little bit today. So that's set up with a lanthanated tungsten and a gas lens and my argon tanks, extra acetylene. All my tanks are chained to the wall, chained to the wall. Here's one exhaust unit I have. So this is an SAS. That's what I run over where I do all my brazing. And I have it set up on a little cleat up there that I can remove and take it down Bring it in the other room if I need to do acrylic mounts. So, and then here's my other exhaust. So this is a wall mounted unit. And this is for fume extraction and small particulate extraction for when I do plasma cutting and welding. And then here is my other extraction unit. So this is a self-exhausting helmet. So, and flips up so you can grind in it also really like this helmet. You got to change the filter about every year, but for the most part, you don't have to do too much. So that's a quick breakdown of what we're going to do, and let's get started. Okay, so we're going to start out with a through hole, because that's the first point of attachment that I want to make. So. Here's our handy flux. I mix it into like a slurry, like a mud slurry. Just a little bit of water. That water is going to burn off first. So we don't need too much. I'm going to do that. 
and then we're going to do the underside also. I'm going to take it, spin it around. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to first I'm going to light the torch, obviously, and then I'm going to run it around the plate and heating the bar at the same time. I'm just going to run it around and run it around. Then I'm going to add a bead of filler metal, and that filler metal is going to tell me what my heat is. I need to get this up to a, a little bit over 1300 degrees for this type of solder to take. So I turn my oxygen on just a little bit so I don't create a whole lot of soot in the air. Make sure I got enough heat. I got enough heat. I'm going to run it in a circle around. All that water is evaporated. Now, put a dot on, it won't take yet, so I need to keep feeding. As soon as it sticks, so now it's stuck, there's a little bead on there, and now it's gonna to start to tell me my heat. As soon as it goes a little bit over 1300, okay, it took. And I'm gonna run around that seam. Here we go. So that silver solder is going to follow wherever that heat goes. So as I move it, and I move it, I'm spinning that solder around the entire joint. And if we did it right, we got our heat up enough, it should have taken to the underside as well. That's why we flexed the bottom. So it did, it took all the way. So that's that. This is what you call a slotted joint. So I'll do a slot first with my hard solder, and then I'll move down to my medium solder for my next joint, and I'll put it right next to it. So, just the same, I'm going to apply flux to the top and bottom. The plate's already been cleaned, it's already been sandblasted. You can sand that off also with a wire brush. So we want our, I want my flat. So this is if I needed a, like a flush mount. If I needed the mount itself to sit flush to the deck or to the wall, that's why I would do a slot like this instead of a lap where it's going to lay over the material. So. This is a slotted joint. This hard solder melts at a higher temperature, so you want to really hear that oxygen coming out of there. Again, I'm moving it around the joint. All that water's evaporated. Now it turns to like a like a glazed donut. Like a glaze. Only need about that much and then move it around again. Here we go. So that joint should have taken on both sides. So where I'm looking for it to grab onto is the side as well as the top. So I just lay it on top. We got our medium solder. Touch less heat. So you saw how that joined together without melting this other joint. That's why you would use a medium and a hard so you can add in multiple joints. We're going to let these cool for a minute. We're going to come back and we're going to do a seam right here, as well as we're going to add this on to this component. So I'm only going to add flux to the rod. I don't want any flux on the top because right now I have a set screw in here that's going to give me locate. It's going to indicate how the depth that I want. 
So I've got a set screw as well as it's already compressed as far as I want it to go. So if I put flux there and I heat it up, it's going to actually join this metal to that metal. I just want to join the tube to the rod. So I just want that connection right there. Now this tube is really thin, so I really want to heat the bar, not so much the tube. Turn it on its side, like, use gravity. We'll let that sit. I'll take out that set screw, we'll remove it, and then we'll dip it in our pickle. Okay, so we let our parts cool down, and then I put them in the blast cabinet, sandblasted everything off. You noticed I've kind of polished this edge as well as this one. This is where we're gonna make our joint, our seam connection, and for me, when, when I blast parts, if you don't pickle them, um, you, you etch the surface um, and it doesn't, that metal will not flow as easily down that joint. So I, I always polish wherever I'm going to make that connection, just so it, that metal will flow easier down the line. All right. So I'm going to paint the plate with the flux. Right. I'm going to start from this edge, heat this area, and this the heat is going to drag that silver solder up. You can also heat the entire plate if you use a torch like this. You could heat that entire plate back and forth, back and forth, and just kind of sweat the whole joint at the same time. But seeing that I have this joint here and these others up here, I wanted to go with this smaller torch so that I can kind of fit in there and work my way down. So okay, now we're going to do some silly thin material. First I start by wiping off all the residue, oxidation. So I just lay it directly over the material. You have this expensive paste flux, and then this not so expensive paste flux. I prefer this. So I will put a dab on. Okay. Are you ready to pick it up? That stuff melts at 450, so it melts really low really low but why i lay it over instead of attaching like a butt joint is it it acts as a slightly stronger 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 solder joint because i'm getting contact at the bottom and at the top and then i can just clip off the top You can see you can move, move it around. Here you have it. With this 302 stainless, it's important to understand your heat. So with this 302, you got to stay at a lower heat because it'll fracture and break. So with this handy flux, we're going to be soldering this together at a lower heat than this would become brittle at. So this this flux becomes liquid at about a thousand degrees, okay? And then it stays liquid in its liquid state till 1600 degrees. So using silicon bronze and brazing this together, 
wouldn't be ideal because this stuff becomes brittle before that temperature. So this is the ideal way is to silver solder or use very low amps. But besides that, we're gonna use this torch. We've got our tank on. Turn our oxygen on. to go until that flux starts to go liquid. I blast my stainless. I put it in the blast cabinet. So this is a part that's been annealed. So you can form it as well. I, so I put it in the cabinet and then you can always polish it out again if you want that bright stainless look and then clear coat before you install. But that's brazing stainless steel. All right, now we're gonna do a small tube to a piece of round 260 brass. And why I would do this is if you need to make a multiple attachment or a removable prong, and we're gonna use this stay bright with this lower melting flux in solder. I'm gonna go with the smaller torch also. All right, so we let it sit, put it in the blast cabinet. But if you saw, as I was heating that material with the torch, and as soon as that solder took, I just kind of pushed the tube in a little bit, and then you're done, you stop. And you gotta let it sit for a while because it takes a little bit for this, this solder to cool down. So let it sit still for a little bit, All right, here we are. This is our yellow brass. It's got a higher zinc content. I got some of this cool gel stuff on my third hand to protect my, my little grip here. The tungsten, the tungsten can take the heat, but not this steel back here, that stainless, so in the spring. So I, I got some cool gel on there. We're gonna use our flux coated filler metal. And since it is a little bit thicker material, I'm gonna go with the oxyacetylene here. My exhaust on. A nice tone. We're going to heat back and forth. Start dripping some of that flux on. Make sure I'm heating the top and bottom plate. Come back to my end. So this is yellow brass, it has a higher zinc content. So with that, you have this white film here that's formed. And that's because of the gas, the zinc that's being burned off and it sticks to the outside of the material. So this just shows you how much fumes are coming off this as you're heating it up, okay? So always having an exhaust going when joining any metals of any kind, but with brass in particular, with the zinc, this stuff can get you pretty sick. Lead can get you sick. Copper can get, all this stuff can get you sick. So always have an exhaust going whenever joining any type of metals because you want to live a long time. Everybody else wants you to live a long time. So protect yourself first because you're the one who's going to be working in this stuff every day. So protect yourself. I'm just gonna show you a couple little tricks. 
So here we have yellow ochre. Here's my little squid octopus spoon for scooping it out. And I just mix it in until it's like a mud, like a slip, okay? And I'm gonna also use this cool gel. So here's the scenario. You got a mount that needs to be lengthened. Maybe it's the day of install. Maybe you gotta get on a plane the next day. I don't know, whatever it is. But you don't wanna have to remove all the paint and you don't want the flux to go down the joint in any direction, so, or down the material. So this is just a little trick to help you out. So first I add on my yellow ochre, okay. Everybody knows how to paint a little bit, so it's not too hard, it's not that complex. Okay, so there you have that. Put them right there. I'm gonna take a torch and just dry that yellow ochre out real quick. Okay, so you really haven't gotten the material hot enough to melt the paint so you're not stinking or anything, right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to add in our flux. So you don't use the same brush that you just added that yellow ochre on with. You're going to go with your, you can either just you can dip it too, but you don't want to mix this yellow ochre in with the flux. Now here's my cool gel. I'm going to put it right here. sit for a second but with this stuff it's it's water-based so just a quick wash off dry off but then you won't have to remove say this was coated in micro suede or felt or something you wouldn't have to remove all that material all that micro suede you would just have to remove a small amount no matter what you're going to sand down that part and clean that part that you're going to be joining but you don't have to, you eliminate having to remove all that material, so. All right, so after letting it cool, washing it off, so you see I didn't have to remove any, any paint. I just had to move, maybe clean about an inch away, not even, probably a half an inch. But there's our solder joint right there. All right, so now you have a longer stem or maybe you had to change it from a wall mount to a whatever, but that's that. So now I'm gonna demonstrate how you braze brass to brass using TIG brazing. So this is what's called a tungsten, tungsten alloy. That's a collet, okay? This is a cup, number six, this is called a collet body, and it's a gas lens. So that's what I use primarily, all I use. So this is lanthanated tungsten. It's non-radioactive. It's pretty good stuff. So that's how you assemble your torch. Have some denatured alcohol on hand or acetone. But here's your silicon bronze. That's the filler metal we're gonna use. Make sure it's really clean. You never know where that stuff's been. So always clean it off. You guys are in for a treat. I'm gonna put on these brand new gloves and we'll get started.
What I've done here and why this is important is if you are doing larger seismic mounts and what is going to capture the piece is has to be brass, but the rest of the armature is made of steel. This is where this stuff comes into play. So this is when I use this technique or if I'm joining two larger pieces of brass together or whatever. And it also is good if say one of your machines, maybe it's a cast iron part on one of your tools breaks. This is how you would fix that part. Also, if a carbide bit fails, this will make it so you don't heat that carbide up too much where you destroy the temper, okay, where you lose the temper. So how this works is I've got a Dynasty 350. I have it set on a pulse setting. And what I do is every, you know, I have it set. This electrode will start and stop so many times per, per minute, depending on what your range is, what you want to set it at. And you can find that all out in your manual and what you like. I also have my pre-flow. That's the argon that comes out of my torch before the weld. I have it set at like 0.3 seconds. So I have argon putting, pushing argon on the material before I start the weld. So I open, what I'm doing is I'm opening up those molecules, okay? So I'm just heating them up till those molecules start to separate. And then I drip in and I drip in and I drip in. As soon as I move it over, it's that, wherever that isolated area is, is above 1800 degrees. So this silicon bronze is just gonna sweat right into it. It's gonna sweat into it all the way down. This is a drip technique. And then when you join steel to brass, this is what's a weave technique. And I'm gonna do a U pattern, okay? I'm gonna drip my filler metal onto the steel and I'm gonna roll it over, I'm gonna roll it over. I'm going to do a weave all the way down, okay? I'm going to weave this way all the way down. And what you get, so this is what it looks like on the back. It should look like one continuous piece. So we have no inclusion, no porosity. And it takes practice. I've been a welder for half my life, so it's been, a, been practice. But And then with the steel, it's the same way. So we don't have any really any warpage to the brass, the steel. We didn't really have any warpage. This is a bend. We did some testing later on in the video that I'll show you right after this. So that's TIG brazing. It's a very important technique for any mount maker or any fabricator to pick up and have in their arsenal of tricks. So TIG brazing. All right, so as mount makers, you don't get to break things very often. As you can tell, these have all been bent once before or twice because I've refilmed this video exercise because I've added things in. So this is this type of silver solder. Okay, we have a through hole, a lap joint, and a slotted joint. Okay, and oh, and again, we, we did our hard solder here, hard solder here, medium solder, okay? The 260 with the silver solder worked out great. All right, so you can tell it's already been bent. So, but either way, I'm putting faith in our silver solder. So this this silver solder and this joint so it still holds up. So that's more shock than it'll ever go through. Here we have the piece that we used our silver solder again to add with our yellow ochre as well as our cool gel, right? And then our painted piece, so you can see how the paint held up, right? And then this joint that we used, this stay bright with a different type of flux, right? stays together nicely. Here's our stainless. Again, our silver solder. And I also annealed this stainless too, so that it was easier to bend. Okay, but it held up. Now here's where we get to our TIG brazing, where we used our silicon bronze. So there's your silicon bronze weld. They are holding up just fine. So there we go. This is the one that we did that was thicker material, that was brass to brass and brass to steel. So it was 
also silicon brass. Now this is that flux coated, so I ground I ground it out with a flat wheel so you can see that we didn't have really any inclusion, okay? And also cut it down so that you can really see it. So Yeah, that holds up pretty good. Now here are our little bitty guys that we did with low melting flux paste, silver solder paste. Okay, so over the last 20, 25 minutes, we've gone over how I do things at the museum in the museum setting. Now I'll take you back to my home shop for the next five, 10 minutes and show you how I do things from there. Okay, so here we are, this is my shop. It's a 16 by 40. So it's not too big, but it, it holds just about everything I need. So this shop, I don't have a, a blast cabinet. I use a pickle here and I don't have a plasma cutter, but I can pretty much do the exact same job. So here's our soldering bench. So there's my little Smith, same type of pickle. I just got everything laid out, just showing that everything that I use is just about the same that you would use at a museum. Some other different fluxes, and I use other filler metals too, because I don't just work on mounts in this shop. So you have your soldering irons that I use for smaller mounts, and then I use liquid flux. So everything's pretty tidy and neat. All my tanks are anchored in. So you have that's oxygen, oxygen, and your yellow map. Then over here I have, this is my exhaust setup. So this part here, this component goes in that window. And then if I'm using this exhaust, I'm trying not to move too fast. I open up this window. So I'm letting clean air in. So that's a view. So working in a museum in the basement, I wanted to have a shop that had plenty of windows. So, but I want to have a clean return. If I don't have a clean return, then I'm going to start sucking air from underneath the doors and from the attic. I don't want to do that. So having a clean return of air and an easy port for your fumes to be extracted from. So it's a pretty simple setup, but it works really well. So here's the, the welding station, my welding table. So this is the type of mask that I use and keep it in a bag. If you have a mask like this, this is designed for to sit underneath a welding mask. So if you use something like that, always keep it in a bag because it's always working. It's always filtering out air. So this is my unit. It's a three in one. It's got a MIG, TIG and stick. And then here's my torch that I have. So I use a Pyrex cup, a little bit different, but still the same with a gas lens and I use a pedal. And then my grinding area is outside. So I use this leg vise and the view, and that's where I do most of my grinding. So that's about it for me. So thank you to IMF for asking me to do this. I'm very appreciative and grateful that you thought of me for doing a brazing workshop. So thank you all.